Good morning, folks. We've got a lot of news to hit today across a wide range of topics. If you didn't catch last night's video with the trivia answer from the morning show, your fellow observers who did catch it seemed to like it. It's right below this video in the link list. We're starting at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star were relatively quiet. No major flares or filament eruptions, but we do have that trans-equatorial coronal hole in black. It's magnetically connecting to Earth for an earthquake uptick watch this weekend, and its intensified solar wind should arrive shortly thereafter, Monday or Tuesday. We continue to see little other minor field activity at the mostly stable setups at the sunspot groups. The solar wind today is dropping out intensity, but more importantly, is driving a minor cosmic ray health alert as Earth's field is so quiet, we've got extra particle flux catching the planetary shield snoozing. Right now, again, it's just minor and only for high-risk cardiac and psychiatric patients. Ignore no symptom. Some quick notes here. If anyone was wondering about the Cleveland volcano and surrounding sisters, and why it was one of the areas in the Aleutian Island chain lacking a caldera, wonder no more. It's there, just didn't see it before. Yet another super volcano in Alaska, and this one is not at all dormant. Cleveland erupts regularly. A quick but unusual note of interest here. Folks, this is one of the most absurd things I've ever heard. What would take Google's best supercomputer 2.5 billion years to complete, the Chinese laser unit did in 200 seconds. Uh, what? Back to things I understand. A 75 degree pan and 3D recreation of the heaviest dust and gas clouds in the galaxy. This can't capture the small scale structure or field activity, but it is an amazing look at the bulk mass objects within the field of view. The color scheme is based on velocity. They have a plus minus scale for towards or away from the observer which is why the color shifts rapidly after passing the galactic center in the frame. Veteran observers, we can't even visualize the current sheet in our solar system, and there's no dust in the way. Yes, I'd love to see it in optical here, but that is probably a fantasy. It's okay though, we'll come back to the galactic current sheet in a bit here today. But to get there, let's look at a nova remnant, the Stingray Nebula. It's fading fast and will potentially be invisible in just another 20 to 30 years after fading in brightness by a factor of a thousand already. This lets us know that while some nova events do stick around for centuries, many are here and gone in an astronomical instant. Sticking with nova events, you wouldn't think this little paper here would cause any trouble, but a simple micro-scale realization is about to make nova-sized explosions in Earth's mainstream isotope story. In last night's video, it was that we needed a recent, nearby nova to explain the young isotopes, and that those isotopes are going to be largely contained within the nova remnant. Today, it's about where many of the other isotopes came from at all. They've realized that to produce all the carbon that is here now, the pre-sun seeding nova event could not have given us all the shockingly high levels of other isotopes. It's like they need more micro-sized nova from very nearby, but those remnants would have to fade quickly for us not to see them instead of sticking around for centuries, which of course is crazy, right? Wait. Moving on to Gaia, good gracious, that's a lot of stars. Nobody can take away from the enormity or usefulness of this latest release, but when you work so hard that you don't have time to read all the other journal papers in your field, you wind up making errors. This here, this is amazing, and nobody can take this away from them, but then, they suggest that how they got it was by watching the up and down wavy motion of the stars, which they say was caused by a previous collision with our galaxy. We learned already this fall that's not possible. The wave is there throughout the galaxy, and so it doesn't take away from their ability to use that wave, the up and down, to map the stars, but where it came from, they have no idea. It's actually the current sheet. It's just that it's not caused by collisions. It's generated from the core. It's the thing that delivers the galactic magnetic reversal just like the sun's does in the solar wind, not actually at the equator of the system, but rippling above and below. It also delivers dust and plasma to help trigger stars in the same interactive and accretion and accumulation paradigm that allegedly all recurrent nova must take. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.